In the last lecture, we proved a logical equivalence which said that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. If you find this equivalence tricky to remember, then one way to do it is to remember that the only way to make P implies Q false is for P to be true but Q to be false. And that's also true of the right-hand side. Uh, in order for not P or Q to be false, then both not P and Q must be false. So P must be true and Q must be false. That's the same condition for making P implies Q false. So what this logical equivalence allows you to do is, given any well-formed formula using our four connectives and or not an implies, we can now find a logically equivalent well-formed formula that doesn't use implies. In other words, we can eliminate implies from that formula. So to see an example of how that would work, let's say you had a well-formed formula like P and Q implies P implies R. Well then, you can use this logical equivalence to rewrite this as being logically equivalent to not P and Q or P implies R. That's simply an instance of the logical equivalence here. And of course, this is then logically equivalent to not P and Q or not P or R. So the implies connective isn't strictly necessary. Um, given any well-formed formula using our four logical connectives, you can find a logically equivalent well-formed formula which doesn't use implies. So in fact, any well-formed formula up to logical equivalence is equivalent to one that only uses and, or, and not. And that property is called adequacy. Here's the definition of adequacy. A set of connectives is adequate if any well-formed formula, and what I mean there is any well-formed formula using not and implies an or, any well-formed formula is logically equivalent to one only using the connectives in that set. Of, in that set. So what we've shown in our last video and what I've demonstrated on the previous slide is that the set just containing not, or, and and is adequate. We're now going to look briefly at some other examples of adequate sets of connectives. And we already know from our argument before that not, or, and and is an adequate set of connectives. What I'm going to argue on this slide to begin with is that, in fact, you can even throw or out of that set. I'm going to demonstrate why just the set and and not is adequate. And the reason for that is De Morgan's laws. So one of De Morgan's laws says that the negation of phi or psi is logically equivalent to not phi and not psi. So we can use that to get a logical equivalence for or by negating both sides. If we negate both sides of this De Morgan's law and we use double negation, then what we get from that is that phi or psi is logically equivalent to the negation of not phi and not psi. So that allows us to eliminate the connective or, because you can see here on the left of our equivalence, we've got something or something else. And on the right, we've got a formula which doesn't use or, it only uses not and and. So given any well-formed formula using not and and or, we can use this equivalence to get a logically equivalent well-formed formula only using and and not. So let's look at a quick example of doing that. Let's suppose you had a well-formed formula which only used, uh, which used not, or, and and. And we know, in fact, that any well-formed formula can be written as logically equivalent to such a formula. Let's say we had something like not A or B and not A or C. And let's say you wanted to find a well-formed formula uh, which was logically equivalent to that. 
and which didn't use or. Well, what you can do is then say, according to my logical equivalence on the third bullet point there, I can replace A or B by not, not A and not B. So we could replace this by not, not, not A and not B and not A or C. And now we've still got an or left just here. So we can try and get rid of that. And we can get rid of that by using another instance of our logical equivalence for or. So this will be logically equivalent to not, not, not A and not B and not, not A, not, not A and not C. Okay, so we don't make particularly easy to understand well-form formulas this way. I mean, this one is really horribly complicated, but in principle, we can use this method to eliminate or from any well-formed formula. And so given any well-formed formula, first we could use our result from the previous slide to show that it's logically equivalent to a well-formed formula using only not or an and, and then we could use this technique to get rid of or, and therefore show that our well-formed formula was logically equivalent to one which only used and and not. So it's possible to show using a, sim using a similar method, but using the other de Morgan's law, that the, the set or and not is adequate. And you can also show, if you like, that not and implies is adequate. So there are various different sets of connectives which are adequate. So it raises the question which sets of connectives are not adequate. And it's actually fairly easy to convince yourself that there are some simple sets of connectives which aren't adequate, such as just not and or on their own. And if you really want to prove this, well, you can prove it by showing that it can't represent the formula not P. So there is no well-formed formula just using AND and OR, which is logically equivalent to not P. Um, if you really want to prove this, then you could do it by showing that if you take any well-formed formula that only uses AND and NOT, then when you make all of the variables in that well-formed formula true, then in fact the whole well-formed formula is true, uh, which is a property which doesn't apply to the well-formed formula not P, and therefore not P can't be represented this way. So by a similar argument, you can show that implies an OR is not adequate, and implies an AND is not adequate. So of course, if not an OR is not adequate, then certainly just not on its own is not adequate, and certainly just OR on its own is not adequate. And similarly, if implies and or is not adequate, then for sure implies on its own is not adequate. So you might ask, well, is there some other connective, some other single connective which on its own is actually adequate? So does there exist a single connective such that any well-formed formula is logically equivalent to a well-formed formula just using that connective? And it's perhaps slightly surprising that the answer is yes, there are single connectives which form an adequate set on their own. So it's a theorem, which we won't prove in 0005, that any well-formed formula is logically equivalent to one which just uses the connective NOR. And what NOR is, is it's a lo uh, logical connective which is defined by having a truth table, which is the same as the truth table of not P or Q. So that's why, why it's called NOR, it's short for not OR, because its truth table is that of not P or Q. And NOR is adequate. You can express any well-formed formula as logically equivalent one to just using NOR. It's not much fun to do it. You won't get nice, insightful formulas. You'll get a big mess, but nevertheless, it is possible. And in fact, there are other single connectives as well, um, which, are, which are adequate, such as what's called the Sheffer stroke, or NAND. So why might I care about adequacy? Well, there are a couple of reasons why you might be interested in whether a particular set of connectives is adequate or not. One reason is that the fact that certain collections of connectives like not an or or not an and are adequate 
allows you to express any well-formed formula in a standard form, and the particular standard forms that arise from thinking about not and or, or not and and, are called disjunctive and conjunctive not normal form. Again, we don't care about those in 0005, but they happen to be quite useful in, um, especially in computer science. Another historical reason to care about adequacy arises from electronic computing. So the photo here, um, which is a photo uh, taken by NASA, is of the human interface part of the Apollo guidance computer. That was the computer which was used in the first manned mission to the moon in, in 1969 and in subsequent Apollo missions as well. And the Apollo guidance computer wasn't built um, like modern computers are out of a handful of chips. It was built out of logical logic gates. A uh, logic gate is an electronic implementation of a logical connective where one voltage represents true and one, another voltage going in represents false. And the logic gate outputs a particular voltage representing true or false according to what the output of that logical connective should be. So you have logic gates for and and for or, for not, for implies, for all kinds of things. And those are electronic implementations of our logical connection, connectives. But the problem with trying to build a complicated computer using logic gates is that different types of gates, so and, or, not, etc., have different timing delays. So every gate takes a certain amount of time to process its input and find out what the output was would be. Like if you put two true voltages into an AND gate, then you should get a true voltage coming out. But if you put a true and a false voltage in, then you get a false voltage coming out. But it takes some time for the circuitry inside the um, logic gates to actually work. And the amount of time it takes depends on the design of your uh, logic gate, and it depends on whether your gate is a not or an and or an or and implies or whatever else. And this is a real problem for circuit designers because it's very important in your, uh, in, in your electronic computer that all the information in this computer has to be synchronized and it has to move around at, um, and be in the correct place at the correct time, which is very different when the timing delays on your gates are very different. So it's very helpful if you can use the same gate lots of times rather than using lots of different gates. And knowing that the connective NOR on its own is adequate allowed the designers of the Apollo guidance computer just to use NOR gates. So they built the Apollo Guidance Center using NOR gates only. In fact, 6,000 NOR gates were used to make up the Apollo Guidance Computer, whose human interface unit you can see on screen there.